In this video, we are going to talk about inheritance method overriding and the two string method. Okay, so first off is inheritance, right? And um, just like a human has two parents uh, and humans inherit characteristics from their parents, right? Um, all Java classes also have in, uh, inherit from another class. In Java, the inheritance is um, just one class. So every class in Java, except for one, has a parent class from which it inherits code. All right, so um, that class that is kind of at the top level is called object, and that is a little bit confusing because we've been talking about classes and objects. Um, so there's actually a class called object and it's actually um, sort of the parent of all classes, okay? And so there's some code in this object class and uh, every class that you write inherits some of that code from this class, okay? So there are some methods uh, that are inherited from the object class called clone, equals finalize wait hash code and two string and the only one that we're really going to um, dwell on is the two string method okay uh, we will uh, look at maybe um, can't remember one of the, one of these other ones here when we're doing the first example okay all right and so that first example is inherit example java that's in the chapter six lecture code, so right here, all right? And you can see that this is a ridiculously simple class. Uh, it just has the class header, and then there's really no code in the class body. It's only a comment, and that will compile just fine. Okay, uh, and so the, the question, or is there, means is there's actually some there uh, but you just can't see it, it is inherited from the parent class of this class, which is object, okay? The object class. So I'm going to create two of these objects, uh, inherit example objects. So that's what lines six and seven do. And then I am going to start calling some code in there, object one dot two string. And then I am going to call the dot equals method inside here. And you can see there's literally nothing in here, right? But there is going to be some output produced when I run the demo program, okay? So here I create object one, object two. Here I call the two string method. Remember, this is the way that you would call a method inside of uh, that's inside of an object, right? So here you put the object's name, which is object one, and then the dot, which means look inside object one, and you will find a method called two string, and return that. It's going to return a string that's stored in S1, and then I print out that string, and this is what I get printed out. Now this is a, a little bit strange looking, probably not what you expected. Okay, so this is kind of the default two string that every class inherits from the object class, okay? And what it does, it puts the name of the class that the object was created from, right? This is an inherit example object, and then an at sign, and then the 32-bit hash of the memory address uh, where, where this is stored, okay? And so this is the actual location and memory written in um, hexadecimal notate, notation, which is base 16 notation and that shortens it up. Otherwise, it's a really long uh, number of zeros and ones, okay? All right, and so you can see there's no, <laughs> there's literally no code in here. And that's because inherit example inherits code from its parent class, all right? So that's what inheritance is. Same thing here, I create another um, object, inherit example object, and then here I compare them to see if they're equal to each other, right? 
Uh, here I do, does object one equal object one? And I get a true. And then I ask, is object one and object two, are they equal as objects? And you can see here, I get a false, all right? So all that code that's running, uh, the stuff that's getting done, you can see it's not in here, it's actually in the parent class, okay? So I don't wanna go too in depth with inheritance right now. You just need to know that every Java class that you write inherits code from its parent class. Um, and for the ones that we're gonna write up until we start talking about inheritance more, um, all of the parent objects are gonna be that class, or the parent class is gonna be the object class, okay? So there's some code in there that you can't see, but it's in there because it's inherited from the parent. Okay. So let's go more into the toString method. All right, the toString method, what happens with the toString method? The toString method controls what is printed when you print out an object. All right, so if I do system.out.println and then put an object in there, that method inside the class will tell our, our controls what is printed to the screen. So you can see here I say add this line to testdog.java. So let's go to testdog.java. Okay. And here is these message the messages that I'm printing. Okay. So here I'm gonna just add that line to the end. System.out.println dog one. And again when I run that you're going to see this dog object that I created in some of the previous videos. When I go to print that out, you'll see, you'll see I'll get this um, output that we talked about before. And this output, right, if you look in the dog class itself, right, there is no two string in there. Okay. You can look through all of these, but there's no method called toString. So what's happening is that the parent class of the dog class, which is that class called object, it is using its toString. And the toString in object will, again, always put the name of the class that the object was created from. Right? So dog1, in this case, is, created, is an object created from the dog class the at sign and then the memory address or the hash of it, however you want to look at it. You can just think as that as the memory address where this is stored inside the RAM, right, of the computer, okay? Uh, so that is probably not what you expected. What you probably expected, right, is something more along the lines of these messages that got printed out here, okay? Um, so, um, but that's not what happened, right? We get the output that is from uh, the object class, the two string version that's from the object class. And you can see it's not super helpful for, you know, it doesn't tell you what the value of the fields are or anything like that, okay? All right. So um, this is just explaining what I just said, right? When you do system.out.println and then have an object in uh, the parentheses, it's going, the toString method controls what is printed there. And what we're looking at is the default toString that's inherited from the parent class. So the thing to know about um, inherited methods is that you can create your own method to replace the inherited method. So in the child class, you might say, hey, well, that's not such a great message at all. I want to change that and I want to customize what is printed when I print out an, an object. And you can absolutely do that. So that process is called method overriding. So don't confuse that with method overloading that we covered in a previous video. This is method overriding. Method overloading is when you have more than one method in a class with the same name, okay? And so, so it kind of winds up being um, methods that have the same basic functionality, maybe with a little twist in there. Um, that's how we've kind of used it before. 
But method overriding is when you change one of the inherited methods, okay, like toString. All right. So what we're going to do is uh, we are going to change the toString me method in the dog class, or we're going to add a toString method. All right. So when we were doing this, we'll say, hey, I really don't like this message, the one that's inherited from the parent class. All right. So I'm going to go in and change and add a toString method into my dog class. So when you type in this, it has to be typed in exactly the same way as it appears in the parent class. Okay, So if we go and look at the object class in the documentation for Java, right? Here's the two string method. It has to be written exactly like this, the method header. It has to be exactly public string two string. Okay. So let's do that. So public string two string. It is very easy to mess that up. Okay. And so um, if, you, if you're off even slightly at all from, from that, it's not going to work correctly, right? And what I said was this toString method controls what is printed when you print out an object, okay? So literally, whatever you return out of this method is going to be what's printed. So you can see this is what happened last time when we printed it. Now, if I just put whatever there, right, and compile it. And this is inside the dog class. And now I go over to test dog, line 24, it's going to print whatever. So you can see that's exactly what gets printed in there. So literally what I said, right, this method controls what gets printed to the screen when you print out an object. That is exactly what it does. Okay, I literally put whatever in here. That is literally what got printed when I printed out the object. And if you want to change that, so I just changed dog.java. I go back and I run test dog.java. You can see that's what's get print. That's what gets printed there. Okay. So this is a way that a class can control what gets printed when an object created from that class is uh, printed, OK? All right, so a lot of times you're going to want to customize this. Um, in fact, uh, let's customize it sort of the way we did over here. This is not a good message or a really appropriate message. So what I'm going to do is just copy this stuff from test dog over here. I'm just going to take this out this whole thing out. Oops. Okay. And paste it in here. I can't use system.out.printf because I have to return this string, right? So that um, printf doesn't have any uh, return value, it's a void method. So I need to put string.format, okay, when I am putting this in a two string, okay? And so now this is inside the dog method, rather than being in an outside class, test dog, I don't need to reference these fields, right? Name, breed, and age, I don't have to reference them the way that the outside class does. The outside class has to do the object name dot and then use the get method. Since this is now moved inside the class, all I need to do is put the name of the field. So name, uh, age instead of all this, and then breed. So it becomes simpler uh, when you move it inside the class here. All right, I'm going to compile that. And now what we're going to notice is that on line 24 over here, when I print system.out.println dog1, right, then um, 
it's going to print the message that we had before. All right, and then you can see that Rover is a three-year-old month. Okay. All right. So in this way, using the two string, right, the class itself has control over what gets printed when an object of this type is printed. Okay. So it, it has more internal control. If uh, an outside class wants something different printed, well, then they can access those fields through the get methods like we did here. Okay. All right. So that's the two string uh, method. All right. So there is um, something called an override tag that you can use in conjunction with uh, the two string method or when you're overriding any inherited method. You can mark that method with an at override tag. It is optional. You don't have to do this. Okay. Um, so how you would do that in, in this dog example is go right in front of the two string right here. And remember, this is an inherited method. Okay. And you would mark it with the at override tag. All right? So that's how you would mark this. And now, right, Java and everybody else who looks at this method will know, oh, yeah, that's an overrided method. And they will know, okay, the code for the, the parent class or one of the ancestor classes has that method inside of it. And then this class is changing that it's altering an, an inherited method okay so um, why use the at override tag it is optional right so let me just show you okay so maybe you um, are making this dog class right and you accidentally forget right to um, make that a capital S when you go to compile it Right? Everything's going to work fine on dog. It's not going to have any issues whatsoever. So there's no syntax errors. Okay, But now, when I go over to testdog.java, you're going to see that line 24 is um, not giving you what you want. You're going to get the old message that we got, and that's the message from the parent class. So what happened was Java, when it encountered this line, System.out.println.dog1, it went over to the dog class and it was looking for a method called toString with a capital S. And so Java saw this method and said, no, nope, that's not it. There's no capital S here. Okay. And so then it said, okay, well, I can't find a toString with a capital S in the child class. Let me go look in the parent class. And in the parent class, it found one. So that is why we are getting this issue. Okay because we didn't do it exactly. So that's why I said you need to do this exactly. All right, so now imagine this situation. Imagine you didn't test this out. You, you forget to make this a capital S, okay? You compile your code, everything's good, and you don't test it out immediately. You get busy doing something else, and then you keep writing more code, thinking this works fine, and then a couple weeks later, something breaks, right? And um, you really don't know where it's broken at because let's say you have a bunch of code on top of this. So you'd have to go through and dig through a bunch of code all the way back to what you did a couple weeks ago and then realize, oh, the issue is that I forgot a little tiny capital S in, uh, in there. I have a lowercase s instead of a capital S. So that's going to take a lot of time. So this mistake, this mistake of not writing an over, uh, not having the correct method header for an overridden method is a mistake that's easy to make but could be very very difficult to track down okay it's a logic error right which is the hardest error to kind of track down so when you mark this with the add override tag okay you know when you're writing this okay this is an overridden method this method header has to be perfect in order for this to work correctly all right. If you mark it with the add override tag, now when you try to compile it, you're going to see that that gives an error. Right? The error message says that the method does not override or implement a method from a supertype. And by supertype, they mean a parent, okay? the parent class. 
So this is just a way of saying, hey, Java, just uh, check me out and make sure that this is an overridden method. And if it's not, then then let me know. Before, right, Java didn't, didn't really care. It just said, yeah, that's fine how you've got it. You, you're the one who wrote it, so... You know, you know how it goes. What how, what should I say? But here I'm explicitly asking, hey Java, just double check. Is there a class with this exact method header in the parent class? And Java said, hey, there's not. So you you better be careful. So this turns that logic error into a syntax error, right? And a syntax error is a lot easier to find. They tell you, hey, something's wrong on line 20. You go to line 20, right? And it's oh, I forgot this S right here, right? So I change this to a capital S, compile that. Now everything compiles just fine. And over here, when you run test dog, right, you get the correct message, the message that you want, okay? So that at override is just basically a for safety, right? To make sure that you're not making one of those um, easy to make but difficult to track down logic errors in your program. So. It is optional, but you should put it there when you are writing these two strings or any other method that you inherit, okay? All right. All right, and that's it for this one. And we in, in the next video, we will um, go through adding a two string from scratch, uh, and we're going to do that into the contact class, all right?